Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, double lines to the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to the elect scattered abroad. All right, my name is Amor Gabar, back with another lesson. Lord willing to edify and to feed the lambs of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit, Rakakwadash. And, you know, pretty much this video right here, you know, it's not personal, okay? Concerning, you know, these, um, these Israelite, you know, this Israelite group, Adam Abbott. It's not personal, man. It's strictly business. And as a defender of the gospel and a defender of truth and, you know, a defender of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, if you may, you know, that's all it is, all right? It's not personal. So, anyway, in this, in this little video I'm about to play, pretty much, you know, they straight up just butchered Revelation 13 and 16 through 17, all right, concerning the mark of the beast, or as we know it, as what it is, the RFID microchip, all right, now again, you know, they straight up butchered the scriptures, and in this video also, you know, he called out, you know, anybody that believes that um the mark of the beast relates to Second Ezra 15, so on and so forth. You know, he called out, you know, brothers that um believe is talking about the mark of the beast. And through the spirit, I believe it is pertaining to the mark of the beast. Thus far, I'm making this lesson, all right, to defend the gospel of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, and to prove all things. So I'm going to play some clips and pause it in between and basically cut this whole bullshit doctrine that the RFID microchip, it, I mean, excuse me, that the mark of the beast is philosophy, religion, you know, sin, whatever, whatever they saying it is, you know, is straight up bullshit, all right? And furthermore, it's obvious, it's obvious and it's common sense, all right, what the RFID microchip is talking about, what the mark of the beast is talking about. But before, you know, without further ado, you know, let me just um, play this. And if I hadn't already, Salak, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, double lines to the apostles, and the elders of the great millstone, salutation to the elect scattered abroad. Lord willing, this is an edifying lesson. So that for, the heat is America. Go on. Verse 16, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. All right. So the mark is talking about a spiritual mark. It's not a literal mark. We know brothers will break it down and say it's talking about uh, um, an RFID chip, right? And I've seen this video that um, the Apostle Tahar did, or the Elder Tahar did from our GMS, and he's basically saying that um, the scientists are coming up with um, some neurological devices that they're going to put uh, in the cerebellum, which is located in the front of the forehead. So they're trying to say, like, since that is happening, that the mark of the beast is just a chip. It's not. It's not just one thing. Um, the basis of people saying the RFID chip is the mark of the beast is they'll go into the Greek word and Revelation 13 for mark, and it says karagma, which means an incision, or um, I don't even say incision, do it. It says to engrave or something, an etching or a sketching in your skin. It also says a stamp too. When you go into the blue letter, which we go into as well, which they go into as well. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there for a moment. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there for a moment. Well, first of all, the RFI, the mark of the beast is not a spiritual mark, all right? And I stopped it here because he admit that he also goes into the blue letter. All right, but he cannot go into the blue letter and prove that the RFID, excuse me, I keep saying RFID microchip because that's what it is, so naturally it's gonna come out the way. But he cannot go into the blue letter and prove that the mark of the beast is anything spiritual. Now, let me go into the first scripture, the book of Revelation 13 and 16. And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number 603 score and six. Now let's go to verse 16. He causeth all. Now, what he said was a miracle. He said 
that he is talking about America. How in the hell could America, all right, how the hell could that he be America? America is a place. America is a continent, okay? Matter of fact, you got North, Central, and South America. So which America are you talking about? All right, America is a place. America is not a he. It's not a person. America is a place. Now, if you want to say America is a he, you must be talking about Amerigo Vespucci, who conquered this land known as America today. All right, and he's long gone and dead. All right, so America is not talking about a he. All right, it's not a he. When it says he causeth all, both small and great, that he is talking about Edom. All right, Esau, the elites of the society, man. All right, now let's go into it. It says, and he causeth all, both small and great. So if he is talking about America, according to you, then small and great is probably talking about what? States, cities, towns, villages? No. The he is Esau, Edom. And both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond is talking about actual people. All right, you can't, you can't be mixing up the scriptures like that. All right, picking and choosing what and what, you know, sounds good and don't sound good and to fit your agenda. All right, don't work like that. Use logic, use spiritual logic in this sense, if, it's, if it was gifted unto you to begin with. So let's read that again. And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now let's go to the word mark, all right, because he says he go into the blue letter Bible. All right. It says a stamp, an imprinted mark of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as a badge of the followers of the Antichrist. The mark branded upon horses, thing graved, sculpture, graving work, idolatrous image. All right. Don't say nothing about sketching. All right. Or, or etching or whatever, whatever you may. All right. It says etching here, but it doesn't say sketching. All right. Now, before we go deep, more deep into the word mark. All right. Because here you have this is where he got the word etching from. But before you skip over that and go to etching, you got to focus on G5482. Now, it says Karagma from the same as G5482. Let's see what G5482 is. It says a pale. Or stake, a palisade, a palisade or rampart, pale between which earth, stones, trees, and timbers are heaped and packed together. Now let's see what a pale is first, all right? Let's see what a pale is first. Let me open a new tab, paste and search, pale. Let's see what shows up. Well, showing you a pale image. But um let me go back. Pale or steak. This is what shows up for pale or steak, all right? You have hair a pill. Okay? A pill. Now let me go to steak, alright? This is steak. Now it says it shows here, this is what a steak look like. Alright, a steak is a, a sharp object, a pointed ob object. Alright, these are steaks. All right, this is a stake, a stake, a stake, another stake. All right, a sharp, pointy object. That's a stake. Now, hold on. Before we go, let's go back to the book of Revelation and backtrack for a second. Uh, a stamp and imprinted mark. All right, this is karagma, a stamp or imprinted mark of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist. The mark branded upon horses, thin carved, sculptured, graven work, of idolatrous images. Again, Karagma from the same as G five four A two. Pale or steak. Alright. Now when I looked up pale earlier, it showed me a pale Edomite, which is another pill 
which is a which this will go back to a word that's spelled the same but it has a different meaning which i believe those are antonyms if i'm not mistaken but you have steak all right and we looked up steak this is what a steak is all right a sharp pointed object this is a steak all right i'm, I'm gonna keep saying it to get it into your mind this is what a steak look like all right now also it says a palisade a rampage a rampart pills between which the earth stones trees and timbers are heaped and packed together all right and this is what it would look like all right how do you get how do you get that together it has to have a sharp pointed object all right now this right here is a stake all right this is a stake a sharp pointy object Okay, this is a sharp pointy object. This is a steak or a pail. All right, this is the origin of that word karagma since you go so deep into the blue letter as well as we do. This is a steak. All right, this is a steak. Let's go back to steak. You get it? Steak. There's nothing spiritual about this. This is a physical thing. All right, this is actually physical, just like this is actually physical. This stake, a pointy, sharp object. All right, so it says, let's go down to the strongest definition. It says, karax, all right, to sharpen to a point, to sharpen to a point. Now, this is the origin of the word karagma, to sharpen to a point, aching. Through the idea of scratching. Now, when you scratch something, you go you go into the flesh. All right, let's say you scratch the flesh. You go into the flesh. You dig into the flesh. If you get a scratch, that means something have penetrated through your flesh, through the surface of your flesh. And this is what a stake does. All right, this RFID chip, it, I mean, this RFID um, syringe, it penetrates through the surface of your flesh, just as a stake would do. All right? So, I even looked up scratch. It says, score or mark. There go that word mark again. Score or mark the surface of something with a sharp or pointed object. <laughs> Let's read that again. Scratch. When you scratch something, score or mark. All right, mark. Karagma. The surface of something. This case, the skin, with a sharp or pointed object. This is that sharp or pointed object. This is that scratch from G, what is it, G58, G5482. All right? A pail or stake. All right? It says, Harax, which is to sharpen to a point, aching through the idea of scratching. A stake, implication, a palisade, or a rampart. Military mound for um serum what is his word um serum relation in a siege trench which is where I got this image from this all right these are carved into a stake the top and the bottom is made into a stake the bottom goes into the ground and the top stays upright sharp and pointy all right. Now let's go back to the video. Um, it goes into a stent on your forehead on your right hand. Everything is not carnal. All right, so lock you. Let me finish real quick. It, it's a spiritual mark, right? right? Give me something Solomon eight and six. I was gonna say. Um, First of all, you gotta prove through the scriptures that it's a spiritual mark. All right, and I don't understand how guys are still holding on to this concept that the RFID, that the mark of the beast, is a spiritual thing. The mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is a spiritual thing. How is it a spiritual thing? That, yo, these guys are sleeping. They, they're they sleeping, all right? They're not fully awakened yet. They're sleeping. They know that they're Israelites, but they're still sleeping, all right? And again, like I said, this is nothing personal, all right? This is absolutely nothing personal. This is just something that, you know, through the spirit of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, I go into, which is the mark of the beast, 
And stupidity like this is unacceptable, man. Nothing personal, all right? Strictly business, all right? As the scriptures say, I'm a, you know, the Lord said he was about his father's business, all right? Now I'm about the Lord's business, which his business is the father's business, all right? I've seen some brothers say on the comment board, if you don't get the mark of the beast, you can't uh, buy or sell or eat. But if it's going to be a famine, how are you going to eat anyway if it's a famine? The Lord is going to have this whole, he can, read second Ezra. First of all, that wasn't even a, a good question. All right, he said, if it's going to be a famine anyway, how are we going to eat? This is the book of Isaiah 65 and 13. Matter of fact, this is the book of Isaiah 65 and 12. He said, first of all, with the mark of the beast, if you can't buy or sell with the mark of the beast, you heard what he said. I'm just reiterating it. He said, if you can't, first of all, if you can't buy or sell with the mark of the beast, then how are you going to eat if there's going to be a famine anyway? Now, Isaiah 65 and 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. All right? Now, when is this going to happen? Matter of fact, let me play this video once more, let me let me just backtrack a few seconds to get you know to bring more light to the scripture I'm about to bring out. Um, it goes into a step on your forehead, on your right hand. Everything is not carnal. All right, so oh, you. Oh, let me finish real quick. It, it's a spiritual mark, right? right? Give me something to Solomon eight and six. I was gonna say, um, I've seen some brothers say on the comment board, if you don't get the mark of the beast, you can't uh, buy or sell or eat. But if it's going to be a famine, how are you going to eat anyway if it's a famine? The Lord right. If you don't get the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell or eat. You won't. All right? You won't. That's when faith kicks in, man. All right? Which is why I'm about to bring out Isaiah 65 and 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword. Who's that? The two-thirds are going to be numbered to the sword. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. All right? Because Esau is going to come in like a flood and just start destroying you two-third niggas, man. All right, niggas. It says, because when I called, ye did not answer. Now, how is the Heavenly Father calling? All right, he ain't picking up, he ain't dialing, you know, you know, um, collect. He ain't calling collect to talk to you niggas, man. All right, he's talking to you through the mouthpiece of the prophets. All right, the men of the Lord. That's how he's calling. Now, it says, because when I called, ye did not answer. Now, we speaking unto you, but you're not replying. All right, it says, when I spake, Ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not, which is your wicked ways. This is the point, verse 13. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Yahweh, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Now the servants are the elect of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, 144,000 to one third. The elect, the servants are going to eat. But ye shall be hungry. Who's going to be hungry? The two thirds are going to be hungry. So we're not worried about how we're going to eat when that day comes. All right, through the spirit of the Lord, I'm not worried. All right, I'm not worried for my 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 so-called you know my woman, my wife, all right, my children, all right, and so are brothers that are in like mind in Great Millstone. We're not worried about that shit, cause we have faith in the Heavenly Father that we're gonna eat, so we ain't worried about it, man. All right. So it says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, power, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Exactly. Now, when all hell break loose, all right, and the men of the Lord are doing well, all right, they're eating, they're surviving, just like how the Heavenly Father have, you know, done well for his servants when they've been chastised like Daniel's in the, Daniel in the, in the lion's den, all right? He ate, all right? The Lord looked out for him. The Heavenly Father looked out for him. We have that same faith, you know? So let me go back to the video. The Lord is going to have this whole, he can, read second Ezra's. I want somebody who believes that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast to break down how it um, how it comes into effect during the times of Second Ezra, uh, fifteen and sixteen. How does the mark of the beast come into effect during Second Ezra, um, fifteen and sixteen? Right during the time of Jacob's trouble. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Now he just quoted two precepts that had exactly to do with Isaiah chapter sixty-five verse thirteen. Let's go to Second Ezra, what he just quoted. All right, he said, um, 2nd Ezra chapter 15, um, verse 16, but let's start at 14. It says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Why is that? Go figure. It says, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, 
and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. Now, what is that talking about? One people shall stand up to fight against another. That's talking about Jacob's trouble. All right, that's talking about martial law. That's talking about race wars. All right, it says, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another's. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into the city and shall not be able because of their pride. The city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Now this right here, um, few, few words, order out of chaos. Now Esau is going to bring order out of chaos, and that's what the so-called white man does. For those who don't know their enemy by now, the so-called white man, the devil, the enemy, he does things strategically, all right? And to bring forth his agenda, he 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 he, he creates the problem and then brings forth the solution, all right? Now, the problem is going to be, it could come in any form. It could be an economic collapse, all right? It could be the dollar collapsing, which is the same thing as economic collapse. It could be a famine. It could be anything, all right? But through this um, tribulation, he's going to bring forth his agenda. So this is going to happen, this more than likely will happen, before the RFID chip is made mandatory, hence the um, term order op chaos. All right, it's a common phrase with the with the with the new world order, the masons, the elites of the society, order out of chaos. All right, so this has everything to do with the mark of the beast. All right, and he also quoted Jeremiah thirty and seven. At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Who's going to be saved out of it? The 144,000, the elect, the one-third of Israel, all right? The men of the Lord pursuing Isaiah 65 again. The, the, other, the other brother with the dreadlocks said, well, how are you going to eat if you ain't taking a mark of the beast, da, 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 da. whatever, all right? It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed, all right? A lot of Jakes are going to be ashamed when the men of the Lord are doing, doing well, when all hell break loose, all right? Because now is the time that we going through tribulation. I, I, when I say I, all right, or we, I pray that I'm in that category of the elect and that the Heavenly Father have mercy upon my soul when all hell break loose, all right? But this is the time that we catching hell and going through tribulation, all right? You know, so that when that time do come, that the Heavenly Father will preserve us from these evils, all right? So it says, at last for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The book of Daniel 12 and 1. At, at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, Jacob's trouble, such as never before since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Now, this, this right here is going to be, is going to be, the, is going to be the worst time in Israelite history. This is going to surpass what happened when you read the book of Luke, the 20th chapter, I believe, all right? When it tells you when we're basically when we were, when Israel and Jerusalem was besieged, all right, when we had to flee into the wilderness around the time of seventy A.D., all right, this is going to surpass that, and that was a that was a horrible, terrific, um, um, horrific time, excuse me, for the Israelites. So this is going to surpass that, and we entering into those days, man, and it's plain to see, all right. Again, like I was saying, a lot of you Israelites don't know your enemy, all right. You're sleeping, you're you're sleeping, man. All right, you're sleeping. If you think that the so-called white man is setting up this RFID microchip system in place and it's not in the scriptures, then you're bugging. All right, something as big as this and the devil is doing it, Esau is doing it, and you're saying that it's not in the scriptures, then you're bugging. All right, because the RFID microchip is in the scriptures, man. And if you say, well, yeah, it is in the scriptures, then where is that in the scriptures? Revelation 13. All right. And this is another precept. What does it have to do with uh, the mark of the beast? Well, Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. All right, the thrones are talking about the, the Lord said he was going to give his disciples, the 12 disciples thrones. He was going to place them upon thrones. All right, and judgment was given unto them. They were, you know, they were going to judge the world. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shah. All right. Now, John, this is the book of this is the book of John. John the Revelator has seen these things. All right. This is this was his vision. The book of Revelation was for John and John only. All right. So 
He saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shah and for the word of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shah a thousand years. How could this be a spiritual mark? All right, because if that's the case, then at one point we were all guilty of receiving his mark. If it's Christianity, if it's an embargo, if it's a philosophy, if it was da 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 da. All right, there's nowhere in the scripture where it says you can repent from taking a mark. All right, now if the mark is what they say it is, Christianity or philosophy or whatever, where in the scripture does it say you can repent from taking a mark? It doesn't. All right. Let me go back to the video. All right. Where's the properties of Esau implementing an RFID chip from Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel or Daniel? All right. Or, or any of the prophets. How come this thing is not being spoken of until uh, Revelation? This is why. Plain and simple. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shai, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass <laughs> yo boy <laughs> yo man yo the book there's a reason why the book of revelation is the last book in the bible all right because this is this is the end of it all man isaiah already happened before the book of um john before the book of revelation excuse me all right the book of isaiah jeremiah the book of the prophets had already happened all right now after the revelation of Yahweh Shah, after Yahweh Shah came on the scene, that marked the end of the days. So now, the revelation that the Lord gave unto John, all right, was a revelation of things which must shortly come to pass. And not only that, it says, let me read it again. It says, and Reve it says, the revelation of Yahweh Shah, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. All right, it was given unto John specifically. It says, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. It was given to John, plain and simple. It says, who bear record of the word of the Most High and of the testimony of Yahweh Shah and of all the things that he saw. Now, all the prophets of the Bible did not get the same visions. Some got similar, um, similar visions, but they did not all receive the same vision. This vision was for John. And this scripture right here is going to prove it. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope for your calling. All right, the one body, the one spirit is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All right, Bashem Rakakwadash, the Holy Spirit. Even as ye are called in hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace. According to the measure of the gifts of the anointed Yahweh Shah. Now we all got a certain measure of gifts that was given unto us by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Now scripture tell you that faith is a gift. Alright. Now even back then, John was given a certain measure. Alright. Um, Isaiah was given a certain measure. Alright. The twelve the disciples, the first four gospel, the first gospels, um, Matthew, John, Luke, and Mark, they were given certain different measures. All right? And it's point blank, period. No, you know, that's it. That's why John was the only one who got that vision. Because it was a vision of things that must shortly come to pass. It wasn't time for Isaiah, Jeremiah, or any of the other prophets to see that. It was only given to John. Simple. Is that is that something new? Where the Lord said, no new thing is under the sun? We want to understand that the Mosai has a righteous mark and he has a wicked mark. <coughs> the Mosai gave Esau authority to implement a wicked stat that you may pledge your allegiance to the beast and to his um our philosophies and the doctrines. That's what it goes into, man. Prove People it. That are down with the new world order. Prove it. Prove it. Hold on. Hold on. You said a key word just now. You just said new world order. You understand that the Mosai has a righteous mark and he has a wicked mark. <coughs> the Mosai gave Esau authority to implement a wicked stat that you may pledge your allegiance to the beast and to his um our philosophies and the doctrines. That's what it goes into, man. People that are down with the New World Order. Even if you take an RFID chip. All right, he said people are down with the New World Order. Wow. Now, hold on. The goal, all right, the biggest thing of the New World Order, all right, is what? What's the, what's the biggest thing of the New World Order? 
to microchip everybody, to implant microchips in everybody. Now there's tons of there's tons of information on that. New World Order. There's an actual book that that is called the New World Order, the Illuminati New World Order, whatever. All right. There's there's many different websites on the internet that you can go to. Go type just type in goals of the New World Order, and you'll see that in that goal is to implement an RFID chip in people. All right. To make a one world currency. I'm gonna play this video right here. <clears throat> and uh, the whole the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. All money will be on chips. So you tell me this guy pulled that out of his ass, right? And so any so not, instead of having cash, anytime you have money in your in your in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do. What everything. You know. Everything is in there. You know? And so they, they want a one world government controlled by them. Everybody being chipped. Another, my question is, man, if the market beast is not the, if the market beast is not the RFID microchip and it's what you say it is, then how the hell could you buy and sell with philosophy? How could you buy and sell philosophy? That, that, that's, a, that's a serious question. How could you buy and sell with philosophy? Some say it's sin. Some say it's an embargo. How can you buy with these things? This You're actually buying with a microchip in your hand. All right? In, or in your forehead. For those that are amputees and they, they don't have a hand. Some even got it in their arm. How can you buy and sell with philosophy? People see they seem to skip over the part that you're buying and selling. Break down how the hell you gonna buy and sell with philosophy, man. <laughs>